that's the whole thing about surrender and why I didn't say too much is because it's not very, it's not a method. <laughs> so I can talk about it and I can talk around it and I can kind of add flowers to it and I can, I can attempt to inspire it, which I will try to do. But surrender is just that it's surrender. It's not a technique, you know, um, it's a letting go. Like, how do you describe, how do you do letting go? It's almost like an oxymoron. You can't do letting go. So, but I will attempt to clarify. Thank you for your question. It's the surrender of all the tension that's been held for so long, basically coming down to the perspective of I am separate and I'm unsafe. And to let that go in a moment of crisis or a moment of distress or in a moment of peace, it doesn't have to be in a moment of distress. Ideally, you do it on a day-to-day -day basis, but if you don't have the catalyst to kind of force you to this point of, I have to either focus or surrender, because otherwise I feel like absolute should. I can't think straight. I can't feel straight. I don't know what's what. In that moment, I don't know. How do you do that? You just surrender. You just, you grow so tired of not being you that you don't even care if you're no longer safe. That's one way of saying it. And again, this transcends to gender. So this goes for men too, because we also feel unsafe. It's not that different. You know, we're all vulnerable on a physical level and we've all had some fucked up experiences and we've all been in very distorted social environments, masculine and feminine. But at some point, there's a breaking point. There's, I can't go on anymore. I can't do this to myself. It feels destructive. I'm eating myself up. I'm creating the absence of well-being through my resistance to life. At some point, we gain maturity, we gain expansion of awareness, and we gain trust in the creator to let go of the sense of separation, to be so tired of trying to protect ourselves that we don't even care if we are not safe. This is one way it can happen. I've seen it happen this way. It's like, I don't care. Maybe I'm not safe right now, but it feels more unsafe for me to not be who I really am than it feels to not be who I really am and try to stay safe. I don't even know where to look anymore for safety. I don't even know what safety looks like, what it is. Is it intellectual safety, social safety, vibrational safety, physical safety, circumstantial safety, financial safety, <laughs> manifestational safety? Um, what, you know, at some point it's just, <laughs> it's just in everything. The sense of unsafety that we carry, men and women both, it's just in everything. And surrender is basically prioritizing God's truth over human truth. God's truth over memory. The freedom of expression, the freedom of joy, the freedom of choice, the freedom of freedom, the freedom of free will over conditioning. At some point, there's a tipping point. Up until that point, you can do methods, you can do techniques, you can do psychotherapy, you can do regression therapy, you can do meditation, you can do healing, you can do Reiki, you can do um, all kinds of modalities. Those are the methods, but the heart of the entity is surrender to God. That's the heart of the divine path. It's the heart of devotion. It's the heart of spirituality. And no method can ever replace surrender. In surrender is the teaching. It's exposed to you right there. And then the power of God, the safety that never left you. It comes not before surrender. It comes after surrender. It's not something you safely maneuver your way into. To some degree, you can establish this. But for the most part, there will always be a point where you just have to prioritize freedom, the freedom of faith, the freedom of trust, the freedom of love, the freedom of the heart, the freedom of freedom of expression, the freedom of knowing yourself over what you think you know based on human experiences. That's one way to kind of make clear what I mean with surrender. It's basically knowing that God is greater than all human beings could ever be. God is greater than your body, than your mind. Now, you should, you should cherish your body and your mind and your social relations, but there is a point where something becomes more important, more true for you to trust in. You're always trusting in something. Right now, you're trusting in unsafety. You're 100% surrendered to, I am unsafe. Not saying this is the case for everybody, but to some degree, on some level, when we feel unsafe, we have 100% of our power of faith invested in the idea and the memories of not being safe, not feeling safe. Maybe you were safe this whole time, but you just felt unsafe. It's a perception. It's an imagination.
nevertheless valid and produces real experiential results, nevertheless, ultimately, what's more true? God's reality as you, I am equals God, God equals me, and this is God expressing itself? Or here I am, physical human being, very vulnerable. You know, I can't do shit for the first two years of my life. I'm absolutely hopeless, as it goes for both genders, obviously. You're so hopeless for the first two years of your life. It's hell. And it's and it's joyful because you're close to spirit and you're not taking on a lot of this world yet. So you're in you're radiating as the sun to some degree. So you make you make the best of it as a one-year-old. But you know, from sort of an objective point of view, it sucks to be born, dude. It really fucking sucks. You can't do shit, especially the first year. You can't all you can do is shit. Basically, that's your only privilege. So that's that's our imprinting, guys. Yeah, it's like, and I'm not exempt from that. You're not exempt from that. That's what exists in the memory, and not just one memory, thousands and thousands of memories. So, from a physical point of view, we all feel unsafe, okay? And from a physical point of view, you know what? We kind of are unsafe. We kind of are. So, is that going to stop us from radiating? You know, if you were afraid to die, you wouldn't have been born. You wouldn't have chosen birth. You chose birth. You knew you would die. So clearly you were not afraid to die because you chose to be born. So if you're afraid of death, then you shouldn't have been born. Sorry. But yes, we all carry this fear of death. And that translates itself upwards. Emotional death or suppression or overwhelm. Social suppression or being you know overwhelmed. And uh, basically social death. Then the death of love, you know, heartbreak, the fear of heartbreak and so forth. Then the death of expression or the suppression of expression. Then the death of knowing our infinite worth and seeing with an open third eye, the creative powers of this universe and understanding our connectedness, the suppression of that, which makes us feel like a victim in the body. And then the blockage in a sense, although the crown never really is blocked, but we don't have access to that because of the other blockages which is the perception that all is sacred, all is God, all is safe. So ironically, the bottom chakra, which is not less or more, but it's all about like survival. And the top is all about like infinite immortal safety. Like you could never not exist. You could never not be safe. So we just, we want to open that channel and it takes a little bit of trusting. It takes a little bit of surrender. It takes a little bit of discipline and focus. And the heart of it is not a method. The heart of it is knowing in your heart that God is God and God is you and you're part of God and it's an eternal, immortal play. And then you just surrender to that greater faith, that greater knowledge beyond knowing what's happening, beyond understanding life. It's beyond understanding. Surrender. So you could say surrender is the prioritization of your divine life over your human life. And when you prioritize your divine life, your true life, over the human memory conditioned imprinted life, you'll have a moment of surrender and it's powerful. It's beautiful. And your life will never be the same from that moment on. And maybe you'll have to have a similar moment another 10,000 times. It doesn't matter. But that initial moment where you really realize I'm not here for the image me that is simply an imprint of all the human beings I've ever interacted with. I'm not here for that me. It's not really me. I'm here as I am. I am here. I am as God is, and I'm an expression of that. That's joyful, playful, exuberant, compassionate, loving, eager to expand, eager to love, eager to share, eager to relate, eager to share the message. That's why I came, to be the message, to radiate, and in some cases, to speak it.